Hi there everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be testing lithium ion battery packs. For those of you that fly long range you're probably already familiar with lithium ion but for everyone else lithium ion packs are typically made using cylindrical 18650 or 21700 cells and they have a focus on maximum energy density for the longest possible flight time. These types of packs are really good for cruising for long distances or for a long period of time but they aren't usually able to provide the same level of power as a typical LiPo battery. So there is a trade-off to be aware of when deciding whether to fly a standard LiPo or a lithium ion pack. And the best way to understand that trade-off is to test these batteries and see how they compare to standard LiPo packs. So I have four lithium ion batteries I'm going to be testing today, two from Lumineer from their NAV series and two from Goldline. We're going to be putting them head to head and we're also going to be seeing how they compare to a similarly sized LiPo battery. It's a lot to cover in one video, so let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into it. Before we dive into the video, I think it's worth taking a look at these batteries on the bench to give you an idea of their kind of shape and form factor. So we've got two 4S lithium ion packs. We've got a 4,000 milliamp hour from Goldline. Uh, it's pronounced Goldline, but they spell it AU line because AU is the chemical symbol for gold. And we have a 3,000 milliamp hour pack from Lumineer that's made with 18650 cells. And you can see if I turn the batteries on their ends that these are just four cylindrical cells all packaged up into a pack. Compared to something like this 4S 1500, you can see that this 3000 milliamp hour pack is about the same size and shape as this 1500 milliamp hour pack, but it has twice the capacity. And that's the benefit of lithium ion is you get more capacity for the same size and you get better energy density. So you get more capacity per gram of weight as well. Looking at the 6S packs, Again, we've got two packs here. We've got a 4,000 milliamp hour pack using 21700 cells from Goldline, a 3,000 milliamp hour pack using 18650 cells from Lumineer, and here's a 1,300 milliamp hour 6S LiPo to give you a sort of size comparison. The 3,000 milliamp hour is uh, roughly the same size as this 1,300, despite having twice the capacity. So we're going to test all of these batteries and see how they compare against all of the standard LiPo packs that I've already tested. Before we carry on, I'd like to give a huge thank you to all of my supporters over on Patreon who sponsored this video. If you'd like to join us for the price of a cup of coffee and get access to my full product testing database, that's detailed information on motors, batteries, props and VTXs that you just can't get anywhere else, along with early access to new AOS products and much, much more, please check out the links down in the video description. I'd really appreciate it. We're going to start by looking at the results of a constant power discharge test. This is equivalent to taking off and flying at a constant speed and altitude for the entire life of the battery. We start with the pack fully charged and then we discharge it at a 5C rate. So the power is calculated as the battery capacity times a 5C discharge rate times the nominal battery voltage, which is 22.2 volts for a 6S pack and 14.8 volts for a 4S pack. We're discharging the battery at constant power all the way down to its minimum voltage cutoff, which for these lithium ion chemistries is 2.5 volts per cell, which is 15 volts for a 6S pack and 10 volts for a 4S. The first thing to look at from the constant power discharge testing is the battery capacity. And you can see that for all of the lithium ion packs I tested, I wasn't able to achieve the rate of capacity in my testing when discharging all the way down to the minimum cutoff voltage. And that's to be expected because those rated capacities are for slow discharges of about 0.1 C. And in any drone application, we're discharging much faster than that. It's good to see that even at a 5 C discharge rate, which is typical for what you might see in a long range drone application, we're still getting over 90% of the rated capacity from all of these packs. But just the battery capacity doesn't tell us everything we need to know about the energy storage of a pack. It doesn't take into account the voltage during discharge. A pack that maintains a higher voltage during discharge will deliver more energy for the same capacity. And it doesn't take into account the weight of the pack either, which is important because we have to lug it around. This graph shows the energy density of the packs, which takes into account voltage and weight. I have the four lithium ion packs on the right compared against the three best standard LiPos I've ever tested on the left. And you can see that the lithium ion chemistries offer a significant advantage over the standard LiPos in terms of energy density, about an extra 26% on average, which is an extra two minutes of flight time if you're flying for 10 minutes. But it's not without trade-offs. The last thing I want to show you is the voltage over discharge for these packs. 
This graph shows the voltage the pack is able to maintain as it's discharged from 0 to 100% of its tested capacity. And we've got the two lithium ion packs compared against the standard LiPo. These are the 6S variants. And we can see that there is a big difference in the voltage during discharge for all of these batteries. The standard LiPo is able to maintain a much higher voltage, but both the lithium ion chemistries can be discharged down to a much lower voltage to provide more energy. There's also a big difference in voltage between the two lithium ion packs as well. And that's to be expected because they don't use exactly the same cells. And even within the same lithium ion chemistry, you can pull some levers to tune a chemistry for better energy density, better power delivery, or higher voltage during discharge. So every different lithium ion cell has a slightly different discharge curve, and it's really important to test them to see which one is gonna be best for our application. In this case, it's looking like the gold line pack has a better ability to maintain voltage during discharge compared to the Lumineer pack. So we've seen some of the benefits of lithium ion packs in terms of energy density. So I think it's only fair that we also look at some of the drawbacks. And we're gonna do that by looking at the results of my burst testing. So let me take you quickly through the methodology. We start with a fully charged battery and we discharge it at constant current of 5C for 144 seconds. Now that 5C discharge is the same as the constant power discharge rate that I was using before, but this is a constant current rather than constant power, so it doesn't change with voltage. A constant current discharge at 5C will take us down to 80% full in 144 seconds. And that gives the pack a chance to warm up, a chance to be conditioned into the same state that it would be in if you were flying it. Then I hit it with a burst test, which is a current ramp, half a C per second every second, until the battery voltage dips to 3.1 volts per cell. And that's the cutoff that I'm taking for this burst testing for these lithium ion packs. And we look at the current and the power that the battery can supply at that 3.1 volts per cell cutoff from 80% full, and that gives us our burst performance. The first thing we can look at from the burst testing is the effective C rating of the pack. And I can't do exactly the same burst test on the lithium ion packs as I did on the standard LiPos. So I've had to make some adjustments just due to the capabilities of the packs. I'm not doing a 15C discharge for 48 seconds because the lithium ion packs just simply can't discharge that fast. So I'm doing a 5C discharge for 144 seconds instead. In both cases, that brings the packs down to 80% full. And because the lithium ion packs have about three times the capacity of a similarly sized LiPo, that's actually the same amount of power. It's about 400 watts in both cases. Then during the burst, for a standard LiPo, it's 2C per second. For these lithium ion packs, it's half a C per second. And that's to make the length of time that the battery spends doing the burst about the same in both cases. And I use a slightly lower cutoff for the lithium ion packs of 3.1 volts per cell because they have a much lower total discharge voltage than a standard LiPo. So it makes sense to lower that cutoff voltage a little bit. With all that said and done, we can see that there is a huge difference between the burst capability of a standard LiPo versus a lithium ion pack. You've got about five times the effective C rate for a standard LiPo compared to a lithium ion pack. And even when you take into account that the lithium ion pack has a larger capacity, you're still going to be able to draw more current out of a standard LiPo. To take the weight and the voltage of the pack into account, we can look at power density. And this is calculated by taking the maximum power that the pack was able to deliver during the burst test and dividing by the weight of the pack in grams to give power density. Again, we have the lithium ion packs on the right and the highest energy density standard LiPos on the left. And what we can see is that the standard LiPos have more than three times the power density of the lithium ion packs. The lithium ion packs manage about two watts per gram, whereas a standard LiPo can manage six watts per gram or even more if it's a particularly high performing pack. Now that we've looked at all of the performance parameters individually, it's time to bring them all together and take a look at the summary scores. And the first thing to notice is that the 4S and 6S packs of the same manufacturer look and perform really, really similar. And that's what we should expect because they use the same cells. You've just got more of them in the 6S pack than the 4S pack but the performance of the cells is roughly the same. When we're looking at the comparison between the Gold Line and the Lumineer Nav, there's a couple of things to bear in mind. Both of these packs perform pretty well. The difference is gonna be down to what you want in terms of the size and the weight of the pack. 
The gold line uses the larger 21700 cells, so you get slightly better energy density, slightly better power density from those larger cells. And also the chemistry they use maintains a bit of a higher voltage during discharge. But you're going to be more concerned about the overall size and weight of the pack. The Lumineer Nav, because it uses the 18650 cells, is a smaller and lighter weight pack that's going to be more suitable for lighter weight quads. The Gold Line pack is going to be more suitable for bigger, heavier quads that can lift that extra weight. So I think the choice there is going to be primarily down to the prop size that you have and the weight of pack that you want to carry. Whether you're looking to pick up the lighter weight Lumineer Nav pack or the bigger, heavier Gold Line packs, there are links down in the video description to where you can buy them today. And they are affiliate links, which means that if you enjoyed this video and you found it useful, you can use those links and I get a small commission. It doesn't cost you anything and you're helping support the channel. So if you can, I'd really appreciate it if you'd use those links. That's all that I have for you today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying and I'll see you in the next one.